Alright, welcome to this Framework Wars, where it's me going against a version of me from 10 years ago. And the task is to build a very simple task manager, and we're just doing create, we're not doing update or delete. So let's begin. I'm going to start with the Trongate desktop app here, and I'm going to create a new app, and I'm just going to call this one Framework Wars. And I'll just choose a location. Now obviously I could use the desktop app and do this whole task in about one minute. But it would not be fair somehow, or at least just it wouldn't seem fair. So what I'll do is we'll get this thing installed, the latest framework which I've got, and now I'm going to quit the desktop app. So everything that I'm doing from here onwards, I'm going to be doing it manually. You can see that we've got a Framework Wars database started, and in fact, I think I'll start by creating a table called Tasks. Tasks is going to have three fields, and I'm doing all of this manually, right? So I'll have an ID, auto increment, and then I'll have a task title, which is going to be a variable character of 255. Then I'll have a priority, which is going to be an integer. Let's just hit save. And there is a fabulous tasks table. Now, I'm going to open up my text editor. And then I'm going to open up Applications, XAMPP, Framework, Wars. Here it is right here. So, again, we're doing this manually. So, in Modules, I'm going to create a new folder called Tasks. And Tasks is going to contain a Controllers folder. And Tasks is also going to contain a Views folder. Inside Controllers, we're going to have a new file called tasks.php with an uppercase T. Now I'm going to turn this into a nice class by doing PHP opening tags. And I'm going to say class tasks extends trongate. Then I'm going to have a little index method. And with this, I'm going to say data view file is tasks index. And I'm going to load up a template. Trongate comes with a couple of templates. I'm going to choose the public template. So let's now go into views. And I'm going to make tasks index.php. Save it. And we'll have a little section with an h1 that says your tasks. Underneath that I'll have a paragraph with a link going to tasks create. And I'm just going to say create new task. All right, there you go. Now let's just save this. So from the home page, if I go to forward slash tasks, there it is. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to build a little create method here. Now we'll give this a view file. So the view file will be called create. I'm also going to have a form location. The form location is going to look at the URL and do a little string replace. Wherever we see forward slash create, we're going to replace it with forward slash submit. And we're going to do that to the current URL. That's our form location. Once again, I'll load up the public template and I'll pass in the data. So, over in the Views folder, we're now creating a new file called create.php. And again, we can have a little section here, a headline. I'll just say create new task. Now, we're only doing create here, not update. And I'm going to echo form open. I'll pass in the form location. I'm going to echo form close. And now... We'll do the form fields. So I'll start with a form label. Uh, pardon my phone making that noise. So I'm going to say task title. And then, actually, let's make it up a little array called attri for attributes. I'm going to have a placeholder that says enter task title here. Pretty cool. So now I'm going to echo form. Input. I'm going to call it 
this thing task title. It's going to take in a task title and I'm going to pass in those attributes. Now let's do another form field. So form label is going to be priority and then I'm just going to say form number this time. So it's called priority. It takes in uh, a priority that we'll deal with in a minute. And for this one, let's have the attributes. Whoops. Let's have the attributes back, but this time we'll say enter priority here. All right. Finally, I'm going to echo a little form submit with a name of submit and a value of submit. And if we want, we can even echo a link. So anchor and we'll have one that goes back to tasks. It's going to say cancel. And we're going to have a little button attribute. Now our button attribute is going to be a class equal to button alt like that. So if we save, now by the way, one other thing, if I go to tasks create, I'm going to have data is this underscore, we're going to have get data from post. So I'll have a little method here that says get data from post. It's going to say data task title is post task title and then data priority is post priority and we're going to return the data. All right, so if I now click on create new task, you'll see that we've got a beautiful form here. I can zoom you in a bit. If we hit cancel, everything is just beautiful. So now I'm going to um, click on this and you can see we've got an annoying autocomplete. If that bothers you though, it's very easy to go into the form and where we've got this attribute, I'm going to say attribute autocomplete equals off and that will take care of that. We've no longer got an annoying autocomplete here. So when we submit this, it's going to go to an endpoint called submit. So just say function submit and let me do some validation. So I'm going to say this, I'm going to call upon the validation helper set rules. Now the first one we're talking about here is our task title. The name of the thing is task title, the label is task space title and I'll just say that it's required. Now you can add in minimum lengths and whatnot if you want. Maybe like minimum length five or something like that or maybe three. So there we go, there's our first validation rule. And then I'll do another one for priority. We'll say priority. And with this one I'll just say required and numeric. Okay, now when we run those validation rules we'll have a result. And we get that result by calling upon validation helper run. If the result is true, then well done us. If the result is false, we're going to go back to create and on create, we're going to display some validation errors. But if everything goes okay, then I'm going to say data is this, get data from post, then I'm going to call upon the model to insert that data into tasks. I'm then going to set flash data and I'm going to say your task was successfully added. Then I'm going to redirect to tasks. That's how it works. So 
a little refresh for good luck and I'll get a validation error by just hitting submit. There you go. Now I'm going to fill them in but not leave enough characters, maybe do something like that, that's perfect. And now I'll say first task priority is one. Submit. Perfect. Now on your tasks I want to display the tasks. So we'll go back to this index thing here and I'm going to say data rows is this calling upon the model get I'm going to order by priority. Then inside here you know we can actually just have a div and say JSON rows and you should see a little summary of our tasks coming in here. But let's just keep on adding a few more records. I'll say third task. Yes, I know I missed out the second, but priority three. And now I'll say second task, which has a priority of two. I'm mixing them up here and you can see that it's ordering them according to priority and that is perfect. So now just to finish this one up, in fact I think that's it. Is that it? Let me see. Yeah, all I've done is just added them with H2s I think. So if I just say for each rows as row, then we're echoing, I think it's an H2, with row, task, title, closing off the H2, something like that. And there you have it. There is not one solitary regular viewer of this channel who is surprised at how that went. We all knew that this was a foregone conclusion. We all knew that Trongate was going to whoop Codeigniter. And is it any wonder? By the way, the web is full of videos where some developer or programmer will say, oh, I don't like that framework, I don't like that language or whatever. And they don't really know what they're talking about. Well, I have recorded more Codeigniter tutorials than anyone on earth. I used that framework for nine years. And to be entirely honest with you, I'm slightly saddened by this. Because Codeigniter for a long time held a very special place in my heart. I'm saddened that it came to this. I would have very much preferred if I was still using Codeigniter, believe it or not. Unfortunately, when that framework got taken over by the University of British Columbia, it just went down the toilet. I mean, they never even updated the website for seven years. I believe they've updated it recently, uh, back in November, but it's, it's finished, let's face it. And what really distresses me and it upsets me is the thought that there's probably a few thousand Codeigniter developers who have heard about Trongate. They've looked at the independently verified benchmarks. They've maybe watched videos like this and they've still not made the switch. Maybe it's time for me to come to terms with the fact that there's some people out there who are just never going to accept change.